What's up, everyone? It is Denise Salcedo. Welcome back to the channel. I am very excited to introduce to you my guest for today. She is none other than the current Impact Knockouts World Champion, Mickey James. What's up, Mickey? What's up? I'm good. I'm good. It's good so man. good to have you. I'm, you know what? I'm glad to be on here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> You know, the last time we spoke was about a year ago, and I feel like so much has happened since then where I was like, oh, my God, like, where do I even begin with this interview? Because you've just been like doing so much. It's been a whirlwind. I'll be honest. Like, I, I, if you would have asked me then, you know, what do you expect in the next year? I think because I was just in such a weird like it was just, yeah, a lot has happened. And it's like sometimes all these things kind of like fall away or figure and I was kind of okay what am I going to do now um and then everything that's come up out of it I'm just so grateful I really am it's just it's really cool it's really cool well let's talk about that a little bit because the last time we spoke I think you had just returned to WWE or you were about to return one of those two things I'm trying to remember the time frame of that and then yeah, it was from my yeah, ACL. Yeah, exactly. I did, I'm doing commentary and stuff like that, but I'd also torn my ACL, which was my first real um, surgery or injury that required, uh, like, as far as hurting myself at a body part. That was in that recovery. You know, anyone who's torn an ACL and all those things, they know it's like six to nine months. And mine was, I felt like I was ready at six months, and but it was about nine months before I made my return. But even still today, like the, my knee is not, you know, it just, it, you have to do constant stuff. It's crazy. Um, but anyway, sorry, I go on, I went on a tangent, but I just, no, had, that's okay. Yeah, I had no idea the amount and, and anyone who ever has to go through an injury or do anything, I implore you to please do your rehab. And because it's so important, it's so important to build your strength back up and to get your confidence back up, especially as an athlete to like move and cut. And you just don't realize how much that one little thing matters. Like that one piece of your body is super important. And it's so crazy too, because you mentioned the knee and it's like, if you don't listen to doctor's orders and like you mentioned, if you don't do the rehab, you don't do the therapy. And then on top of that, you got all the mental stuff that you got to work through, especially if you're an athlete and you got to go in there and trust that body part of yours. I can only imagine like what an uphill battle that must've been. Yeah. Well, and, and I'm great. Like it was actually, I learned a lot about my own, like stability and all these other things that I, and I got a bunch, it was cool. I enjoyed going and my therapist was amazing. And, and my surgeon was amazing. Um, and even all the rehab stuff, like it was really cool. Cause I, it was nice to find, because I, I was in that place as, you know, when you first come out of surgery, um, like, Oh God, is this neat? Is it ever going to be the same again? And you know, there's just, there's so many different exercises. And it also challenged me to, cause I'd have to change up my workouts according to my need to still stay in shape because there couldn't do certain things. Um, to different types of exercises and routines and things to kind of keep your, keep, keep yourself going and challenge yourself in different ways. And I always like a good challenge. So how is the knee right now? Like, are you feeling um, good? It's, it is good, but I, you know, it is good, but I just had the match at, um, hard times too with Kiera and then TV tapings. And it's like, it's still, it's not the same as it was before, right? It never will be because there's just a little bit more scar tissue in there or like inflammation. And so it's just like the, I'm terrible about like icing. One, I don't like to be cold. It's not enjoyable for me. That is true. You know? I mean, I like an ice cream. <laughs> yeah. I don't want it on, like I don't yeah. want the cold on me, you know? <laughs> I don't blame you whatsoever. And especially right now, we're getting into the winter. You're like, and it hurts more in the winter, doesn't it? It is unpleasant. It's Oh, un my God. And I'm like, this is a conversation Nick and I were having because he's like, you know, I grew up in Virginia with all the seasons. And I always say, oh, I love those seasons. I love the winter. And the winter comes. And I'm like, oh, it's cold. I'm not going outside. I can't stand it. And he's like, you really hate the seasons. Why we should live in like. Florida or somewhere warm all the time. We're in Texas right now doing media. I landed freezing. Oh God. How does this happen, Texas? 
How do you get cold like this? I don't understand. I thought I was coming to the tropics or something. And no. You're like, I was expecting like desert. I was expecting heat. Like, what right. is this? <laughs> I thought suits, short suits, outfits. I don't want to wear my short suits, outfits. It's cold outside. Oh my God. I don't envy you right now. I really, really don't. Like I live out in Los Angeles. And for me, like anytime it gets like anything below 70 degrees, I'm like, that's it. My back hurts. I'm yeah. done. <laughs> it's too cold. I got my layers on. On. I mean, yeah. all the things. <laughs> exactly. So Mickey, let's go ahead. And, you know, we kind of touched a little bit briefly about the wild year that you have had. And I mean, like on top of that, you had a wild year personally before that we had COVID where everybody had a wild year. But let's talk about let's focus a little bit in this year, because uh, around the springtime, you get your release from there. You know, fast forward a couple months later, you are executive producing the show, uh, an all women show, NWA Empower. And now fast forward, you're back with Impact Wrestling. You got the belt right behind you. I kind of want to ask you a broad question, but seriously, with everything that has gone through and everything that you've been through this year, what would you say has been the biggest lesson that you have learned? Um, that uh, you got to keep pushing forward and not all is lost. Like sometimes we get to that. I think, you know, we get to sometimes at these points because you put all your energy and the focus into this one thing. And then if that thing is taken away from you, you, a lot of people go like, okay, what? And that's why I was like, oh, what's next? And in those what's next moments, I think you really have to trust yourself and your gut. And I, and I went with my gut and, um, you know, I could have went and wrestled somewhere and just showed up and, and it would have been awesome. Uh, but I felt like I really had to put my energy into the girl show because that's what I had put so much of my energy into, um, and just conversations. And I believe in it. And I still believe in it. I think an all women's product would do amazing um, and will do amazing and continue. And I hope that everyone kind of steps up and, you know, does more for their women. And I know a lot of companies do the company I'm with this one d does and NWA obviously has, and, you know, um, it was cool. It's cool to see it kind of come through and, and the fans really get behind it and um, almost validate what I was, what I was, you know, fighting for. So, uh, it, I mean, it trended number one and number two, just above and under UFC all night long. So that's got to stand for something. I'm just when, saying. When you have, you know, when you're putting on a show that a lot of people are telling you it's not going to work, it's not going to draw, women don't draw, et cetera, and all of the things that you have heard in regards to women's uh, pro wrestling and all of that, how much pressure does that add to you to say, you know what? I want to prove you guys wrong. And then when you kind of have all eyes, you know, you're getting all of the media coverage, you're getting everybody on social media saying, oh, this is going to bomb or this is not going to bomb, you know, all of that input. How does that like motivate you? But at the same time, you know, did that add any pressure in putting event together that event? Um, I think it only really, for me, it only really adds pressure if it's like my peers saying it. Like that would be the real kicker if it was like a specific company or a specific you know person that I respect or admire says like oh that'll never work it is it is a bit soul crushing right like it, it sucks and and obviously everyone is, has their opinions and however they got to that or that, that opinion is um you know their own right however um I think that it wasn't obviously it wasn't just on me like I could only like in my mind, I go like, I can only have people in the locker room and women in the locker room who are there for, you know, to shine and, and are going to take the moment and take these opportunities and over deliver. Um, and I couldn't, I'm like, no negativity, no drama, no wenches, none of that. Like if I, I don't like they we're going to have an awesome night to celebrate women's wrestling. I can't stand any, like, you know, no bad mojo anywhere across the board. So that was important to me. But so the women that I chose for the show, and especially in that producer's roles, the Gales and the Medusa and Jazz, you know, and it was just, and we had some killer guys there helping out too, you know, so the team, the whole team came together, but I just, um, they, they really took the ball and the girls really took the ball and every girl went out there and slammed it out of the park. And I could not have asked for 
for a better moment, for a better company to do it with, with NWA and the fact that everybody was able to come together in some form or fashion. And um, I mean, we promoted it for weeks, like Impact promoted it for weeks on their television, like with the whole story with Melina and Deanna and myself. And it was, it was really awesome, you know, and in reality, those companies didn't have to do that, you know, but they did because they, whether it's my personal relationship with them and the impact has always done stuff for the knockouts. Like I always say that they were well ahead of the curve with the women's wrestling before it was a thing. Um, and I, I think that, you know, every company highlights their women or at least one woman or two very, very well. Um, mm -hmm. And I mean, shit, Becky and Liv just main event at raw, you know, and that's awesome. I love to see that. I love both those women. So it's just like, you see these things kind of happening. I feel like out of this and questions happening and, you know, people wanting to see each company kind of step up and do more for their girls. And so I love to see that too, because I think it's important because there's a, the difference is, is like, there's the, there's a lot of women out there now, whereas before there wasn't. So, you know, you could, you could justify only having one spot on the card for the girls because you literally had probably 10, 10 girls, you know, to, roll through and stuff now i mean the the it's like fields of gold out there with these girls you know like there's so many talented women out there who want to be wrestlers you know it's yeah crazy. it's crazy and they're good they're really good you know and so it's just it was cool and on top of that, I really feel like the conversation around women's wrestling has really sort of expanded because, you know, as somebody that covers wrestling on a weekly basis, you know, daily basis, it, 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 a lot of the people that I speak to, a lot of the people that, you know, come into these podcasts or, or I talk to on social media, when it comes to the women's segments, there is a lot of passion. There's a lot of, hey, we want to see more women, you know, uh, on these TV shows. We want to see them get more than two minutes we want to see them get more than one match and that conversation is there how important do you think it is for the fans to be vocal and say hey you know we we care about the women's wrestling that you put on your show well I think that the fans voices have been pretty powerful in this whole thing I mean I think that you know the women's wrestling matter movement I think the give the divas a chance movement that all kind of transpired and that's kind of what I say is like when impact was doing all these things, the girls were getting two segments and they were getting all these, I wrestled in a cage and you know, there was hardcore matches and last knockout standing matches. There's all these things. Um, it started to kind of fuel like, Hey, our, these girls over here could be doing this too. And now these girls over here could be doing these too. If you just give them the chance. And I think it's important because if that's something that the audience really wants to see, I mean, obviously I feel like our audiences have never been shy of telling us what they want to see. Um, and obviously, you know, you can't do everything that the, every little thing. Cause that's a, it's a lot, you know, you exactly. That can be demanding sometimes. Yeah. No, you're, like, <laughs> uh, you're like, we want this. We want that. <laughs> <all these> <laughs> um, um no, but it's it's very important. I think it's been a huge catalyst and, and you know, the success of Empower. And I feel like that kind of help, has helped transpire uh, this like little snowball effect. And hopefully it keeps growing and growing and growing. And um, I'm excited for it. And I think, you know, it's, it's the difference, too, is that, uh, you know, all these girls are very talented now. And so before it was a lack of talent, a lack of uh, the amount of women to be able to fill out a, or organization or to fill out a card like that, where that's no longer the truth. You know, there is a, an incredible amount of talent out there. And so it could, you know, I feel like, yeah. And speaking of incredible talent and the amount of talent, you know, let's talk about your return to impact wrestling. I kind of want to get an idea of what the difference or like the difference, the change, what it's been like, you know, returning to the company and what has like this current regime that, you know, is helping run impact. How different is it from the past? How is your experience, you know, differentiate and what is like something that you're just like happy to see in impact wrestling? Yeah. You know, it is, it's a lot of the same thing faces and a lot of different faces, you know, um, obviously the locker room is much bigger. The girls, there's the, the locker room is much bigger. Um, uh, I feel like personally I'm kind of in a different, whereas before, 
when I came back and even the first time I was there, like first time I was at Impact, I was young. I was hungry. I was trying to make it. I was doing all these things. I was Alexis Lurie and I was in the gathering and I was, will, you know, would do anything, you know. Um, and then the second time I came back and, and was able to cultivate a hardcore country and, and do that and kind of, I felt like morph into who I truly am and who I was as a woman, because I'd always played that girl next door, kind of boppy or like skips down to the ring, which I love a good skip, you know, we all do. But um, I felt like I had grown up in the character, but my char but my character hadn't grown up, if that made sense. Not, not truly. I tried to like in gear changes, but um, with that, I was able to merge my music in and write my own entrance song and um, really define and, and play with that character and make her so unique um, that when, even when I went back to WWE, I, I kind of had the thing of like, Oh, I really think I should do hardcore country here. And I don't think, you know, obviously it's another company's character or whatever. So I think there was a little bit of that, but plus it was just like, Oh, they didn't really get it. And most fans, knew me as Mickey James, this one. Right. So, um, and I also felt like that's what they, those fans wanted, you know, like they didn't, I don't, I didn't know if they would even know who hardcore country was going there. Um, but yeah, then after everything and then how everything kind of went, um, you know, before Dixie wasn't, and I love Dixie and she was great. She was there, but now Scott Demore's there and Scott was there when I was there the first time, you know? So it's just like this, and I love Scott, and um, I think that coming in and not coming in and to be able to to do empower first and before coming in and wrestling because that was all my focus was on that, and I wanted it to be so I, I wasn't taking like any wrestling bookings. I wasn't doing anything, and I was like, I'm only doing this right now. And then when I'm done this, and after this is done, and after this is successful, then we can figure out what I'm going to do if I'm going to wrestle or whatever. Um, and yeah, I was able and to come back and have an awesome, awesome match with Deanna. And, uh, it was, it's been really, it's been freaking awesome. I really, I can't even, you know, except for the fact that I'm, it's 8am, 9am in the morning <laughs> and I have no makeup on because I was like, Oh, maybe I could, I thought my filter. No, you look marvelous. Marvelous. No, I'm serious. Moisturizing. uh, <laughs> If you wouldn't have said off. anything, I would have been like, oh, you know, she's just doing like a fresh face. Like, I love this really? look. Yeah, no, I love it. I love it. We're in my room and we're over Zoom, right? So it's, I picked this corner because I was like, oh, I can pop. The natural lighting. You're like, let it come in. Let yeah, it come in. You know, and the light, but the lights in here. I mean, if I could show you this light, look at this. What is this light doing? Oh, what oh, is that light oh see, those ones don't always help very much. What is that light? Yeah, doing? no. I don't know. I and feel you. Either side. Oh yeah, I feel you. But it's gonna give you like a nice glow, like a nice, very like like soft glow. I love your it. Nice your yes. soul, your soul <laughs> is glowing. You're glowing. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Mickey, so I do also want to bring up Diana Praza, who you just mentioned right now. You're in your fourth, you know, reign as knockouts world champion. And Diana Perrazzo was not a difficult opponent to essentially beat. She was a very dominant champion. And now you guys have gotten into this entire story. You guys have done a lot of cool stuff. I love the stuff that you guys did where she came and she attacked you at your barn. I love that. Um, Tell us a little bit about what it's been like to work with Deanna Perrazzo and also how that whole thing sort of went down. Um, well, I don't, I can't believe I didn't have her arrested, you know, for sure, for showing up to my house and beating me up in my own barn. I was just cleaning stalls by myself, you know. Um, no, I will never, I will always say that Deanna is probably one of, not only is she probably, you know, one of the greatest knockouts champions, but she's legitimately probably one of the most talented women I've ever been in the ring with as far as in the ring, her tech, technical, her game. She's so smooth. She's just crisp. And so uh, I feel like this whole feud and, and we're so different. That's the thing. We're so different personality wise and even stylistically um, the way we, you know, attack and everything. Um uh, 
it made for a very unique type of matchup, you know, and I feel like it was, it's a lot, it's the story that a lot of people can get behind and resonate with. And, um, you know, I've been really interested, you know, since I've won the championship from her and everything that was kind of said and done, it was all this heat. And then she kind of just disappeared and now she's come back and she's in jeans and a t-shirt. And like, I feel like in my mind, when I'm looking, I go, so this championship, she's lost the Pope hat. She's lost the virtuosa robe. I go, as she's kind of stripped it down to bare bones and whether it's her getting back to her roots or whatever. But then I go, well, I feel like she's a bit lost without the championship and she's forgotten because she was champion for so long and such a dominant champion. And she beat everybody and retired people and all these things that she's, you know, became in this own, like, this is what I am. And then without this stripped away, she just doesn't know what to do. And a woman like that can be very dangerous. Um, so, uh, hard to kill is kind of a good name for whatever's going to happen at this next pay-per-view because there's certainly no love lost between us. I have a lot of respect, at least on my end, even still. Um, and that was kind of it is that she just kept disrespecting me and she kept, thinking it or saying it in a way as if I was disrespecting her. And so that was just, we clearly are like oil and vinegar a bit, but yeah. we're good together on salads. Yes. And I love it. I love to see what you guys do in the ring. And I'm very excited for hard to kill January 8th. I think that you guys uh, kind of bring out the best and the worst in each other, but in like a positive way though, like where you're going to, you guys are going to take it to like the extreme and do what you need to do uh, to get the job done. Now, Mickey, I know we have a couple minutes left, so I just want to go ahead and wrap it up with my final question for you. We are about to get into this brand new year, 2022. What are your goals? What is on the bucket list? of Mickey James? Oh, gosh. Um, well, to retain my championship and to, you know, fight anyone who wants to come at me for it and keep retaining it, that would be awesome. Um, I still want to put more focus into uh, the women's division, women's show or however. So I'll, I'm going to still work, you know, be working on that. And um, yeah, I have a lot of goals. You know, obviously our supplement company uh, launched last year in the middle of the pandemic and it's doing so well. So Nick and I have been putting a lot of energy in that and to keep growing that guy. Um, I have so many. I have so many. I'm trying to get my son to get on a horse and maybe teach him how to ride. That's he's so not, cute. Not into it. Oh, not no. He doesn't Is like he afraid? Food. He doesn't like heights. That's what he's talking about. Oh, poor no, thing. I feel no, so I bad. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> but it's such a beautiful thing, though, to like even get the opportunity to even learn how to ride a horse. Like, I can't even imagine like that just doesn't go down here in Los Angeles. Oh, I think it's because I grew up and I go, I don't know if this is a girl thing, boy thing, because my little brother, like obviously my sister and I learned how to ride when we were very young and I've ridden all my life. And my little brother, I remember he learned how to ride, but he just wasn't that into it. He's like, oh, oh yes, I'd rather ride the four wheeler. And I'm like, oh, okay. You know, You're like, is this hereditary? Like, what's going on here? I don't know. But, but there's a lot of male riders, clearly. There's a lot yeah. of men out there, horse trainers and riders and stuff. But cowboys. Of course. Of course. A different seat. Because but I, it's a Western set. Like, I have an English saddle, but I put him in a Western saddle. He's just not into it. Wow. You just, you know, different people, different interests, et cetera. That's the fun thing. You get to learn like we're what have this thing to do, <laughs> that we were going to share this moment, this thing we were going to riding together, <laughs> galloping through the fields. Oh, I love that. That would have been great. That would have been fantastic. It been. <laughs> well, maybe he'll change his mind. Maybe, we'll maybe it'll happen. There'll I be a moment. I don't see it happening. I'll be honest. You know, Let's hope they you click. Know. As far as that, no, but in all seriousness, yes. Uh, to, retain the championship to keep kicking ass. Um, I think there's a lot of women out there that I would still love to face. I got to get through Deanna first and beat her again so I can shut her up for good. And then, you know, we'll see what happens, but I'm excited. I'm excited. So until exactly. then I just down doors, you know, with, yes. Keep doing it. Keep doing thing. it. <laughs> it's so exciting to see. Like, I love it. You know, I've always been a big fan of yours. You already know that. I'm like, I already, I'm like, I did the fangirling in our first interview. And I was like, I, I won't continue the fangirling on the second interview. But seriously, I'm a big fan of your work. Uh, so lastly, Mickey James, please feel free to plug in anything you'd like to plug oh, in. You're so sweet. Well, anybody can find me at MickeyJames.com. We kind of just revamped uh, my website. Kristen Ashley kind of revamped it for me. Um, 
And we did a little zhuzh over there. You can find all my socials at Mickey James Twitter, at the Mickey James on Instagram. And I just have to say to you before I go, to watch you grow, especially over the last year or so, it's been amazing. Um, and we need more women's voices in wrestling. And so I really appreciate it. I think you're amazing. So Thank I, you. <laughs> you're going to make me emotional. <laughs> you're like, don't no, cry. You're not supposed to cry. <laughs> yeah, I love to see it. And I love to see the women get more voices in the, you know, in those conversations, be it be, you know, the uh, press conferences and stuff like that. And these conversations with different talent, because it's, important that we have the women's the woman's perspective on the product and on these things so and you have a very good one so i appreciate it thank you so much you have no idea what that means that officially made like the rest of like my life so i appreciate oh, it thank you no so worries. much mickey um thank you so much for talking to me thank you for doing like for the kind words and for doing everything that you do um i hope we get to i'm pretty sure we'll talk again in the future but other than that i'll let you go and continue on with your day thank you so much mickey oh, no worries have a great day darling. thank you bye everyone bye.